Hello, in this video, I will be showing you how to make a scroll view that can auto scroll. What is auto scroll, you ask? It's a method of keeping the current selection within the viewable mask of the scroll view when you change your active selection from one item to another. The first step is to create a new project and name it appropriately. The next thing I usually like to do is delete any unnecessary game objects in the hierarchy that we don't need. In this particular case, it's the Global Light 2D. Following that, I like to change the background color in Scene View. You can do this by going to Edit, Preferences, Color, Background, and then change it to your desired color. Now let's create some folders for resources and scripts that we'll be using at a later time. Now that we've created those folders, let's go inside of the scripts folder and create some C Sharp scripts. We'll be creating item button, scroll view sample, and scroll view auto scroll. And we'll be using all three of these at a later time. Make sure the main camera is selected, right click on it, select UI, and then choose scroll view. Now that we have a scroll view, let's select the canvas. On the right side in the inspector, change the render mode to world space, change the scale for the X, Y, and Z to 0.01, reset the position for the X, Y, and Z to 0, 0, and 0, change the width to 300 and the height to 400. I'd like to clarify that these canvas settings are my personal preference and yours may vary depending on your use case. Then we select the scroll view in the hierarchy in the inspector under the rec transform, select the anchor presets button. And while holding shift and alt, select the bottom right icon to modify the pivot and position. Now we need to shift our focus to the hierarchy and remove the horizontal scroll bar that we will not be using. With that removed, select the vertical scroll bar in the inspector under Rec Transform, select the Anchor Presets button and while holding Shift and Alt, select the Vertical Stretch Preset. Select Canvas, press F2 and rename it to Scroll View Sample. Now select Scroll View in the inspector, uncheck Horizontal Scrolling because we will not be using it, set the Vertical Scroll Bar Visibility to Permanent. Under Viewport, select Content and add the Component Vertical Layout Group and make sure to uncheck Child Force Expand for the width and the height. Click on the padding to expand the drop-down menu and you can set these values to your own requirements but for this exercise we will set left to 6 and top and bottom both of them to 4. The next step is to add another component called Content Size Fitter make sure to change the value of vertical fit from unconstrained to preferred size. Following that, select the Anchor Presets button and while holding Shift and Alt, select the top left preset. Now it's time to create our button. Right click on Content and select UI Button Text Mesh Pro. In the pop-up menu, select Import Text Mesh Pro Essentials and wait for it to complete. I believe the gizmos are too big at this time. Select the gizmos drop down button and scale the overall size to your preference. Back to our button, set the button width value to 270 and height to 50. Select the button in the hierarchy and press F2. Rename the button to item button. To create a prefab from this button, drag it from the hierarchy to our previously created resources folder. Double click on the button prefab to open it and then select the anchor preset to top left. This is an important step. Then we will rename the text mesh pro text to text name. Same thing for our text field, set the text anchor preset to top left, change font size from 24 to 14, width 200, height 14, and set text alignment to left align and reposition the text field XY position like so. Let's right click, select UI image to create a new game object, set the width to 40, height to 40, 
and change the default color to something like gray and reposition to the left side. Before we continue, select the text field and adjust its position to be better aligned. While still selected, duplicate the text field by pressing Ctrl D and rename it to text level. Move the text field farther down so we can better see it, change the width to 65 and change the alignment to right aligned. Then move it into the corner and change the text value to level.00. Select and reposition the original text field and change the default text value to name of item goes here. For our next step, select the button and change the state colors. We will change highlight color, select color, and pressed color. With the button selected, add the component item button script that we made earlier and double click on the script name to open it. Inside of Visual Studio Community, our first step is to remove the start and update functions that we will not be using. Add using Unity Engine.Events, using Unity Engine.Event Systems, and using Text Mesh Pro. Now we're going to create a custom event class extending from the Unity Events built in event class. The purpose of this is to have a usable event that allows us to pass a reference through the invoke call. Create multiple private variables. These will be serialized fields and this is where our custom event class will come into play. To auto-generate get and set functions, use the shortcut Control R E to expose our private variables. Our next step is to add the Unity interface handlers for our desired events that we want to capture. Specifically, we want to add iSelect handler, iPointer click handler, and iSubmit handler. Select the first interface handler reference and while holding Alt, press the Enter button twice to auto-generate the required function. Repeat this step for the other interface handlers. Inside of the new handler functions, we'll redispatch each event using the appropriate custom event and pass in the this reference in the invoke. Create a get and set function to give access to the text mesh pro text value. We will only expose the text value, not the object reference. Our last function for this script is to be able to set focus to this game object instance and invoke the appropriate event. Back in Unity, make sure you have the button prefab open. In the inspector, set the reference for the text mesh pro text field called text name. Moving on to the next script file, open scroll view sample, remove the update function and add using unity engine.ui. Now we need to add some private serialized variables, one for content and one for prefab button. Then for the next variables, add some spacing and add a header for easier readability. In this section, we add our custom events that we will dispatch from the scroll view. We will create an event for on click, on select and on submit. Following that, add some more spacing and add another header, then create a variable for the default selected index. Add more spacing and another header, then create a variable test button count. This will determine the number of test buttons we want created on start. Back in the Unity object hierarchy, select scroll view sample and in the inspector, Add a component script called scroll view sample. Then populate the references for content and the button prefab. Let's return to our script file scroll view sample in the start function, check if test button count is greater than zero and call another function to create the test buttons. Create the test create item function which will loop through the count and call a dedicated function to create each button. Now we create the function create item. First we instantiate the prefab, then set the parenting and the appropriate properties.
Then we will use the Lambda shorthand expressions to add our event listener functions for on select, on click, and on submit respectively. Select each function name with the red underscore and hold Alt and press Enter twice to auto-generate the missing function. Do this once for each event listener. Inside of these functions, we will invoke the proper event and pass in the item button reference through the invoke. Return to the main scene in Unity, select the button instance under content and remove it from the hierarchy. Make sure to save, and at this point, if we press play to run the project, we should see a button created in the correct location of the hierarchy. Let's stop the application and change the default count to 10 and run it again to see the additional buttons created. Move the game panel to be side by side to the scene view and select the button at the top and press the down arrow multiple times and the selection will go out of the screen. While still playing, to see what is happening, select the viewport and in the inspector, uncheck to deactivate the mask. This will show you that the viewport does not follow the selection and this is the behavior we're going to be implementing. Currently, the navigation directional path is auto-generated by Unity and we can visualize it by selecting the Visualize button. We'll be creating the pathing for the button navigation directions, so let's open the item button prefab in the inspector, select the navigation dropdown and change it from automatic to none, then to explicit and leave the fields empty for later usage. Moving back to our script file scroll view sample, in the start function, add a reference to the function that will manually update the navigational direction references. Select the function and use the Alt Enter shortcut to generate the function, followed by creating an array of all the children item buttons and check that there are at least two buttons or the navigation will not work. Create a for loop and loop through each child object in the array. For each button, get the navigation component and call another function to get the up and down references to populate into the navigation. Then set the reference for the navigation back to the button or they will not take effect. Use the Alt Enter shortcut to create the function get navigation up. Check if the index current has a value of zero. If yes, get the last child reference in the total entries. This is optional and will result in a looping navigation. If no, use the current index and obtain the previous item reference. Then get and return the selectable component from the item button. Again, use the Alt Enter shortcut to create the get navigation down function. However, this time check if the index current is the last index position. If yes, get the reference to the first item at index position zero. This is also optional similar to before. If no, use the current index and obtain the next item reference. Then get and return the selectable component from the item button. Let's see this in action inside of Unity. Press play, select the first item and press the down arrow multiple times. You'll see the selection went out of the viewable area. So let's disable the mask and see what is the current behavior like. With the mask disabled, you can see we have a vertical looping navigation in both the up and down directions. Back to our scroll view script file, Create a function called select child to select the desired index. First check if the provided index is within range and get the item button reference and call the obtain selection focus function. Create another function called delayed select child. This is done because you cannot immediately set focus to an object. We need to give Unity time to initialize before we can ask it to perform focus related actions. Our temporary solution is to use an I enumerator and a coroutine. Inside the start function, we will use a coroutine and call the delayed select child function. Now when we run the application, we will automatically set the focus to the default selected index after a delay of one second. 
At this point, let's open the scroll view auto scroll script file and remove the start function and add using Unity Engine.ui. Create some serialized private variables for the viewport rec transform, content, and transition duration. Next, we will create a private subclass called Transition Helper. This serves the purpose of making the calculations easier to manage. Then create some private variables for duration, time elapsed, progress, in progress, position current, position from, and position to. Use the shortcut control RE to create get functions for private variables in progress and position current. Create an update function that will call the tick function and the calculate position function. Select the tick function and use the shortcut alt enter to auto generate the function. In the tick function, check if in progress is true, then use time delta time and duration to calculate a percentage of progress based on the elapsed time. In the transition complete function, we will set the in progress to false. Create the function calculate position and use the linear interpolation to calculate the x and y and yes, you can do this in one sentence. Create a clear function to reset the state to the beginning by resetting the appropriate variables. Create the function transition from to. This will first call the clear function in case of a previous active transition, followed by storing the provided parameters into variables. Back to the main class, scroll view auto scroll, create a private variable for the transition helper class that we'll be using. In the update function, check if transition is in progress, call update first, then retrieve and apply the updated position value. Let's make some space and create a function called handle on select change and we will come back to this later. Create a function get border top by local. This will take the provided game object and return its local position. As a side note, this is because pivot position is top left aligned. Create get border bottom y local. This will use the object position and size of the rect transform to calculate the bottom border and return it. Create get border top y relative. Use the parent game object called content as an offset position to add to the local object top border. Create get border bottom y relative similar to the top. We use the content position offset to add to the local object bottom border. Create move content object y by amount. Here we prep the variables position from, to, and duration so we can pass them into the transition helper class. Create get vertical layout group. This will return the vertical layout group, and I would suggest caching these types of variables when possible. Back in Unity, select scroll view sample in the hierarchy and the inspector add component scroll view auto scroll. Set the references to viewport and content. In the scroll view sample script, inside the handle event item on select function, Get a reference to the scroll view auto scroll and call handle on selection change function and pass in the item game object. Now moving on to the script scroll view auto scroll in the handle on selection change function, get the viewport top and bottom borders. Call the appropriate functions to get the target top and bottom borders. Check the top difference to see if the target is within the viewport visible mask area. If not, we will move the content to the correct location and take padding into account. 
then we will do a similar thing for the bottom difference. And if we need to, we will call to move the content object position and take padding into account. One minor correction we need to make is to use the correct variable when calculating the viewport bottom with an offset like so. Congratulations! Now we have a scroll view that will auto scroll, so let's play it and see it in action. This is a versatile scroll view that we can change the default selected index and even change the spacing to something like 20 and it will still work exactly as expected. The purpose of this is to give you a solid starting point that you can build onto for your specific project requirements. Keep in mind that you can also use the events that we made for item on select and on click or submit through the scroll view sample inspector. If you like this tutorial, please press the like and subscribe button and add a comment below to help with engagement and discoverability so that others can discover this tutorial. And if you want to see what I'm working on, you're welcome to watch my live game dev broadcasts on YouTube or Twitch. See you next time.